I thought it would be fun to see how all of this works in a living subject. And to that end, we're now going to turn our attention over here to an echocardiogram. This is a non-invasive way in which we can ascertain heart structure and function in the living human being. It has the benefit of allowing us to use sound waves rather than any radiation to image the heart, to have an estimate of sizes of the walls of the chamber of the heart and movement of the heart valves. On our last slide, I'm just going to show you a schematic of how we are going to look at the echocardiogram. The transducer is placed on the chest and a sound wave passes through the right ventricle, through the interventricular septum and into the left ventricular area. In real time, this structure is moving and we should be able to see that now. Diane Fatkin is a cardiologist from Australia who is a researcher in our group in Boston and she is now going to show you an echocardiogram of Dr. Kevin Davies in which we will see normal heart structure and function. We are by convention going to begin with a view that shows the heart turned upside down with the atria on the bottom, here is the left atria, the right atria, the atrial ventricular valves are opening and closing. Here's the left ventricle sequentially moving, the right ventricle. And you can see the rhythmic contraction. As a cardiologist, we can ask whether there has been any damage to the left ventricle, such as from a cardiac event, a heart attack, and that would result in a decrease in the mobility of this particular wall of the heart. Alternatively, and as we'll see tomorrow, if an individual had abnormal thickening of the muscles of the heart, hypertrophy of the ventricle, we would see that this chamber size would be significantly increased either in the left ventricular free wall or the interventricular septum. And that can give us an enormous amount of information to indicate that there is underlying heart disease. If we go to a parasternal long axis view, we can look at the heart in a different direction. Now, as shown in the previous schematic, with the head up here, the feet down here, and we're looking at the left atrium, the mitral apparatus opening and closing, blood traverses from the left atria into the left ventricle and exits through the aortic valve. This white structure that appears and disappears on the screen is the aortic valve opening and closing. We're now going to do one final view of the heart in which we are going to take cross-sectional uh, views looking from the base of the aorta, the base of the left ventricle up to um, the apex and be able to have a look at how the heart contracts in a sequential donut type of appearance. This is the left ventricle beating rhythmically and with nice normal contractions in all of its different walls at the level of the mitral apparatus which you see opening and closing within this region. As we progress up towards the um, uh, top of the heart, we are going to begin to enter in towards the aortic valve and see that opening and closing. Here it is right here. As the blood exits the left ventricle and goes out into the systemic circulation. This valve has a very classic appearance comparable to what we call a Mercedes-Benz sign in the echocardiographic world, and I think you could have probably just seen it there for a moment. Okay, if we go back to the uh, four-chamber view for a moment. So I hope that we've convinced you that the heart is truly an amazing organ. It has the integration at a subcellular level of contractile proteins, whole organ physiology, electrical activities, and coronary arteries that are absolutely essential for normal heart structure and function. We also hope that as you look at these images that you'll remember that you only have one heart and so you better take good care of it. There are many of us who are predisposed to all sorts of disorders, be that from our inherited genetics that we'll talk more about tomorrow, from the diets that we eat, and from the abuses that we superimpose onto these other factors. And it is important to change only those things that will ultimately give rise to poor cardiovascular health.